So now we're gonna go into the most subjective part of it all. The starting Pokemon, which act like a merry-go-round. You will always get a connection. Starters in their own right have always until recently conjured up certain themes, such as the reptilian grass types, the fire types with fire valves, and the water types. They can surf. Generally, their base stats will range from a total of 520 to 535 and harbor the abilities of Overgrow, Blaze, and Torrent to boost their respective grass, fire, and water moves by 50% when their health is under 33.3% recurring. To be honest, we're coming to the specific Pokemon now and we've talked about how I briefly feel about the generations, so all there is to say is that this list will be very subjective. And it has taken me a long time to construct it because of how similar my tastes are when I'm eating catching them. So, top 10 starter Pokemon, let's go! DIG! Going back to OG, with a Pokemon that gets mixed reactions these days, Charizard! This little devil has been the center point of controversy within the Pokemon fandom for years now, to which people point the finger and say it's overrated, and honestly, I don't care about that sort of stuff. No, I, I seriously don't care. Should you care? I mean... Sure, yeah, Charizard isn't the most creative of Pokemon. It's quite basic. But you don't need him to have 200 tails, five and a half heads, and a laser cannon on its chest to make it likable. People either like Charizard because of its, dare I say it, originality and simplicity. Yes, you do! Originality based on design, and I mean, that isn't to say it's fully original because it's still a lizard or because they see what it does in the anime and don't follow the series much. Or they just really like dragons and see Dragonite as too derpy. Either way, fandoms happen. They happen. There's no getting around them. There's no use complaining about them, because once one goes, another will take its place. It happens. It's the circle of life. It's Mega Evolutions, however, I can enjoy looking at for different reasons. The Y version has this lean design in order to show how much more business Charizard means to inflict, and the other gave him his long-awaited dragon typing, packed with his very own non-oxidized flaming facial hair. They also turned him black, but he got ironically burned figuratively. Anyway, Charizard admittedly isn't the best Pokemon to use competitively, so instead, I can just talk about its Mega movesets. Mega. Y's main goal is to make the best use of Drought and its high special attack using the one turn Solar Beam with Fire Blast, Focus Blast, and either Roost or Dragon Pulse. Personally, I would have said Air Slash, but I guess they want Charizard to cover as much ground as possible. X, on the other hand, has Tough Claws boosting its contact moves by 33%, using Dragon Dance and Claw to raise the table to the neck, which either having Earthquake or Fire Punch and Roost. Which is fine because Charizard X could stupidly get hit by ground moves anyway. Look, just please take my advice and introduce secondary abilities and make Levitate one of them. Clumsy Charizard can cause unintentional forest fires. Unintentional. Yeah, okay. Nice to know how hot its fire is too. To which I never knew that Charizard's tail could light up to a whitish blue if it gets mad enough. And oh wow! It uses its wings to fly high! That's incredible! It does this partially to search for strong opponents, showing how competitive this Chari Lizard can really be. No! Continuing off with another fire type, the Scarfy Blazing Badger himself, Typhlosion! Typhlosion isn't very high because of its near-simplistic design. I know I said that about Charizard, but Charizard isn't very high also because of its near-simplistic design. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's pretty badass with the flames around its neck and its sleekness. I, I just see it as pretty cool to say the least. Although I don't like its model in the 3D Pokemon games because it looks even more plain there and seems to be slouching a lot. Put some muscle into it! There we go! Typhlosion has plenty of bulk to keep it ablaze and hit hard with the choice specs, increasing its special attack by 50%. So that eruption just cleans house in a matter of seconds. Fire Blast is there for the switch hit, Hidden Power Grass covers that water weakness, and Extra Sensory or Focus Blast covering more ground. So just like Ninetales delivers a curse to anyone who touches it, no curse from Typhlosion. You'll just become Ash. NOT THAT ASH! Rubbing his fur together to create large explosions. Sounds like a nice day for nylon carpets. You also know when it's visually ready for battle, and conceals his true self within hot flames. Wow, all this from a honey badger named after typhoons and explosions. Oi! 
I'm only saying this because I've been getting pestered a lot about this. Yes, I like mudkips. I like swampets too. I really think Swampert has a majestic tail to match up with his other fins that serenade its body, along with the eyes that can either be the vision of intimidation or just what's going on. It's a tanky looking Pokemon which got even bulkier with this mega evolution to act as the Pokemon version of Brock Lesnar with Swift Swim to boost its speed. Oh wait, we're not supposed to talk about the movesets yet. But yeah, when you get to Mega Swampert, you get a Pokemon that skips leg day. What, were you too lazy to draw some quads and calves, were you? Look, I skip every day, but at least my body is proportionate in almost every single way. Almost. Got a big belly button. Okay, now we can talk battling. With his typing, Swampert is only extremely frail to grass moves, while we're standing everything else. Stealth Rock will start the match off unfairly. Earthquake to keep the prey unbalanced. Scald to burn it while it's struggling. And either Roar to make it run away in pain. Toxic in case it can't be burned, sadly. Or Protect to avoid any comebacks. He's not a coward. Just add some more physical attacks like Waterfall, Ice Punch and Superpower, er, as well as Rain Dance for swift swimming. Violence! Hold the leftovers if it's not going for Mega. Swampert is very strong, like rock hard. I'm really liking these entries at the moment. That's enough information. Okay, and it seems to be some kind of water detective whilst swimming away, leaving everyone behind. So yeah, it's based on a mud skipper, a mud puppy, arf arf, and the Axolotl. Axolotl. Come on, we already covered this in the cutest Pokemon list. So it's possibly the most exotic starter here. Scythe! It's the master or mistress of the rogue class, Greninja. Greninja does lose a few points for having a polygon head. I mean, seriously, the ears are like someone glued two paper planes to his head. But besides that, it's the exact ninja it's set out to be. Even though I know what it is. Way to conceal yourself in the shadows. The tongue is totally not a huge giveaway. They call a setup the suicide lead. That's offensive. Toxic spikes, spikes, taunt, and shadow sneak. Yeah, I hardly remember seeing those recommendations, but there they are. Most likely because its typing keeps changing due to the infamous protein ability. And then holds either a focus sash or a life orb. Creating throwing stars out of compressed water is the coolest thing for me. That and its speed which makes it the fastest starter Pokemon, beating Sceptile, sorry to say. While the sixth generation starters takes after RPG classes with Chestnut resembling a knight, warrior or paladin, Delphox as a mage or warlock, and Greninja as a rogue or thief. The ninja setup is highly reminiscent of the Japanese tradition of linking frogs to ninjas based on the folk story, The Tale of the Gallant Jiraiya, about a ninja shapeshifting into a large toad. So we definitely know who is the ninja because he transformed into a toad. And his name is Jiraiya. Quick! A chicken that will soon cook itself, unless it's vegetarian. Blaziken! Blaziken is just that Pokemon which cries out SUPERHERO! Possessing the fighting spirit with the determined expressions, kicking with powerful legs, and punching with dandelion arms. The long hair that was inspired by a chicken's flat comb, and not eating food off the ground like the rest of the family to remain hip. Then Blaziken transcends to Grandmaster, with its megaform with fiery focus sashes attached. In battle, Blaziken kicks some ass with a life orb attached, but you already knew that. Following through with Protect or Swords Dance, then Flare Blitz, Low Kick, and Stone Edge or Knock Off, while justifyingly upgrading itself with Speed Boost. So when I fight Blaziken, it's like its arms become Mount Etna because of how strong I am. And it's not hard to doubt Blaziken's incredible jumping skills, and its feathers burn off like a phoenix. Yeah, yeah, Blaziken is a giant chicken, but it resembles more of a Cochin chicken based on the fluffy legs. And I was right about the barbecue phoenix comparison, as well as the resemblance to Horus and Ra. Two Egyptian deities with hawk heads. Hasn't got the black flames though. Pimp! <laughs> a monkey that has ape in its name but has a tail. Infernape! Honestly, I know this is an unpopular opinion to prefer Infernape over Blaziken, but that's all right. The aim is to spark some controversy, so there probably won't be any because I mentioned that fact. I think Infernape is rendered in a complex fashion, and I'm pretty sure that because it's an angry monkey and it has fire on his cranium, there is a hothead pun somewhere. While the life orb eats away at it, Nasty Plot shows that Infernape isn't just brawn. You use Fire Blast for specialties, 
Close combat or vacuum wave, depending on what kind of build you want to go for, physical or special. And grass knot, because it's too lazy to do a leg sweep with its really long legs. It uses a special kind of martial arts involving all its limbs. That's called Muay Thai, my friend. Its fire never goes out. <laughs> Suck on that, Charizard. It's beaten by none in terms of quickness. Greninja would like to have a word with you there. And Sceptile. Uh, agility isn't meant for tossing people around. It's meant to sharply raise your speed. How did Game Freak not get this? However, it may be linked to Son Goku. I definitely prefer this to Blaziken. Well, that's the Japanese interpretation of the character Sun Wukong. Gotta tie things back to their roots. So if you don't know who Sun Wukong is, it's the main character in the Chinese epic, Journey to the West, a monkey with powerful abilities. Also similar to Venara, a race of ape-like humanoids in the Hindi epic, Ramayana. See, I told you, Muay Thai. Bloody amateurs. Petwar! Calling in with the power to blow a hole through your face. It's Blastoise! Honestly, if Blastoise was just a turtle, without cannons on its shoulder, it would be nothing! Just a speck of dust! And also a giant tortoise. But I'm quite glad I got rid of War Turtle's fairy ears. I don't know, they just look a bit odd on Blastoise, mainly because I haven't seen them on Blastoise yet. Oh my god! And if that wasn't enough, Mega Blastoise adding an extra cannon. And Mega Launcher. We're not supposed to talk about battling yet! But you get what I mean. Blastoise is just one of those other simplistic Pokemon with adding something a bit extra, which is quite fitting. So if you're not going for Mega, then hold the leftovers. Go for more of a defensive nature like Bold. And you Scald because Blastoise doesn't have enough offensive power to take it down with raw power. That's the way it's got to play out. Rapid Spin, avoid those mishaps. Raw, tell them to f*** off. And Toxic, do the math. But if you are going for Mega, then Scald or even Hydro Pump if you want to go for a bit more extra. Dark Pulse, Aura Sphere and Dragon Pulse to make sure that its ability is complemented. And Ice Beam, y you never know. Well, okay, based on the red and blue entry, Blastoise definitely has no problem blowing a hole in your face. And playing rugby. If it deliberately makes itself heavy... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Deliberately makes itself heavy. It's only 85 kilos. In real life, it would just go flying backwards. That just doesn't make any sense. There you go, that's the one people point out. Punching holes through steel. Thick steel. Okay, if you mean that it just stands its ground really firmly, then okay. I'm not sure if that would still qualify as making itself heavy. You can crush your foe all you want, Blastoise, but you'll never be in the same league as Snorlax, or Metagross, or Groudon. TREE! The ace of the trees and speed unless Greninja comes to pee. Play. Sceptile! I'm not gonna lie, Sceptile would be my favorite for such a long time. Like this Pokemon being the main reason Leaf Blade was invented. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people prefer Grovile's design over Sceptile's, but... For me, I don't think anything can beat that bushy tail. It looks like someone dyed a fluffy cat's tail green and then Sceptile yanked its tail off. But I just also love that laid-back expression that Sceptile has. Until he goes into Megaform and means serious business by showing everybody his ass. But Grass Dragon... Okay, yeah, really weak to ice. But at the same time, that's one of the coolest Mega Evolutions I've seen so far. I mean, the renders of red add a charismatic touch. Now, I haven't seen anything that recommends that you just use normal Sceptile, so... Yeah, go for the Sceptilite. Personally, for me, if you're using Leaf Storm and normal Sceptile, then you want a White Herb attached to it so that it can use Leaf Storm more than once. Or Focus Sash and just switch it out. But for Mega Sceptile, it's good to keep on the Leaf Storm. Focus Blast, covering more ground. Dragon Pulse, because you gotta make good use of that extra layer. And then Giga Drain or Earthquake or Hidden Power Fire. Wait, Earthquake? But having Lightning Rod means that it can be really good in double battles in order to boost its special stats and keep Leaf Storm on the offensive. So if you're worried about getting paper cuts off Sceptile, keep on worrying because it's very agile and those leaves are very sharp. But please do not catch it if it's in the wild. It keeps those trees that you breathe in oxygen from alive. And it's pretty much George of the Jungle. What more is there to say? So his name is pretty much a combination of Sceptile and Sceptridium, referring to his fern-like tail, or Sectile, referring to the sharp blades growing on his body, or Scepter, from his title as King of the Forest, or Scissors. Come on now, we're not that simplistic anymore. DIE! <laughs> the Narwhal Otter Swordsman that looks like a fighting type but isn't... Samurott! 
Now, I've already explained how Samurott is pretty much the granddaddy of them all in terms of its evolution line. Obviously, they're all the granddaddy of them all, pretty much. But he knows where his enemy is, based on the horn pointing him in the right direction. It's also pointing up to show that the enemy's bigger than him and he's able to take on things bigger than his size. But yeah, I will reiterate my point on skipping leg day. Samurott has four bulky legs, and those legs can transform into arms. Just look at the thumbs while drawing out swords hidden within them. That is innovation. So Samurott doesn't have the best stats in the world. I mean, it has good offensive stats, but total lackluster speed, man. But anyway, best make use of those offensive stats with a life orb held. Hydro Pump to go in hard. Ice Beam to go in hard. Grass Knot to go in hard, but with a little twist. Taunt, Aqua Jet, Super Power, and Knock Off. Uh, I pick Taunt. Or if you're going for more of a physical build, then Swords Dance, Waterfall, Aqua Jet, and Mega Horn. Doesn't even need to go Mega. It's already got a horn. So this Pokemon can glare at someone and quiet them, but doesn't have the secondary ability Intimidate. How do you feel about that? So yeah, part of the armor on its anterior legs become a giant sword. That is just, that is just insanely cool. So if this Pokemon can swing its sword really fast, why is its speed at 70? Please think about these things. Anyway, even though it's a samurai otter, it's based on a sea lion, okay? Well, with characteristics of a samurai or shogun. Its tail can be based on a Japanese war fan. The helmet can be based on a rare spined muric shell. And there you go, the markings on its chest make it reminiscent of a giant otter. Guess you gotta create a mule somehow. In! The Emperor Penguin, who also happens to be a trident. Empoleon! Now this is quite weird, I know, because I said I preferred seals to penguins. But I think if you know anything about me now, I like the majestic look. Even though Superior isn't on this list. I can't explain because I don't want to. A bird with a trident on its head would be like an impalement from Freezer's horn. So leftovers yet again, to keep it in tip-top shape. Stealth Rock because Empoleon does have plenty of bulk on it. Defog to clear those entry hazards that are giving you a really tough time. Toxic so it can spit out loads of bullshit. And Protect, I, I was leading to that joke again about Protect. Scald, yeah, and Roar to keep the Doctor at bay. So yes, if you want to tell who the leader is, it's the one with the biggest horns. So they're not just there for show or disembowelment. I don't get it, what is it with all these Pokemon swimming really fast but then they're really slow in battle? Is it because we're limiting the space for you to battle in? Is that it? You, you can't accelerate fast enough, that's what you're saying. You can reach a good top speed. I feel like I'm just complaining all the time. And basically, just don't make fun of his tiny penis. Wait, do penguins have penises? I just googled it. No, it doesn't. I also like the fact that it's water and steel. I mean, yeah, it increases the amount of weaknesses it has and makes it weak to Infernix fighting type capability. But like I said, I think it complements its design really well. Especially when it's roughly the same height as its namesake, Napoleon Bonaparte. And especially when you get a Pokemon that is pretty much equivalent to Poseidon in bird form. I didn't even know there was a royal penguin. Oh wow, there is a royal penguin. I did not know that. And yeah, it is based off Napoleon for its name, basically. And height, but mostly its name. Actually, I did hear somewhere that Napoleon isn't actually that short. Wasn't. So, once again, let's uh, conjure up that overall Pokemon list. Thank you for watching. Lights out. Tabloid! The editors will gain power as soon as the Age of Dark comes into man! But I thought because I am a local Regen boy, I thought I would uh, actually give a sort of uh, review of this new album by Bullet For My Valentine. 